Now that's one board down, one to go. In my next video, I will do the same sort of walkthrough for the SKR V1.4 Turbo, and you can see how I installed that board in this printer. It's a little bit different than what you've probably seen on other channels, and I even have my own custom mount that I'm going to be sharing on Thingiverse that you'll be able to download. So just a quick reminder before I get started that this is part four in a video series where I'm upgrading various components to the Big Tree Tech components. That includes the TFT35, the Mini E3 version 2.0, and the V1.4 Turbo. So if you are interested in the comparison of all of these components, if you wanna see how I tear down and get this machine ready for these components, or if you wanna look back and see my install of the Mini E3 version 2.0, I'm going to include a playlist right up here that you can click on to catch any of those parts. So I hope you enjoyed those parts and let's get started with the upgrade to the V1.4 Turbo. So here we are with the SKR 1.4 Turbo. As you can see, the first thing we're going to need to do with this board is install stepper drivers because this board does not have any on board, unlike the Mini E3 boards. Now I believe for this printer, the best choice for steppers are the TMC 2208s because we don't need any of the features of the TMC 2209s. We don't need the extra current because our motors won't use it and we don't need the sensorless homing because we have end stops. Now, if you go with the 2209s, it's going to work just fine, but it's going to work just like the 2208s. So I've got the TMC 2208 3.0 from Big Tree Tech. That's what these look like. And these are excellent stepper drivers because they have a lot of heat dissipation on board. And what's great is these already have the UART configuration so that we can configure these steppers with software mode, but we are going to have to make a couple of changes to the jumper configuration before we can do that. Now this is pretty simple and we're gonna make the same changes to all of these. And I've got this wonderful set of pliers that I can use for this. And the, as you can see, these are really tiny needle nose pliers. If you don't have something like this, you can use tweezers. You may be able to get it with your fingertips depending on your fingernails. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move all of these jumpers off except for the second one here. All these other ones need to be moved off. Now you have the choice. You can either pull these all the way off or what I like to do so that I can save them in case I ever need them is just move them off to the side, making sure that I'm not shorting anything else or that this jumper is not doing anything. So again, I am going to use these to just pull each of these off into this position, only leaving that second from the red side jumper in place. All right, there we go. So that's what each of these is going to look like with just this jumper installed. We're gonna move the rest of these over. I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Okay, so as you can see, I have moved all of the jumpers. This is what it's going to look like. Again, with only this second jumper from the red actually still on here, the rest of them are cleared off. Now, we can actually put our stepper drivers into the slots. Now, the 2208s, there's no additional configuration that you need. Just make sure, again, buy the UART version of these chips. Don't buy the ones that are meant for standalone or spy or anything like that because that's gonna be additional configuration that you're going to have to do. Now, if you are using the 2209s, there's gonna be some extra pins up here at the top. And since we're not using sensorless homing, you're actually going to have to cut one of those pins. I will include a little graphic here on the screen showing you which pin to cut in case you went with the 2209s anyway. But now, all we have to do is, again, this is color-coded. You'll see red and black. Can't really mess that up too much and that's all we're going to do. Now, for this particular machine, we are not going to need more than four steppers, and that's because we are going to run both Zs off of one stepper. Now, why are we going to do that if we've got extra steppers? Well, for me, is a, a bit utilitarian, meaning we don't need to run both Zs on two different steppers because 
it works really well off of one. These have plenty of power because we can set the current that we're going to output. And not only that, but we may want to use that other stepper for something else, such as a second extruder, which I plan on doing in a future video. So I am going to go and populate this last stepper. Actually put in the last stepper. If you only have four, again, only populate these first four here, but we're not gonna put it in the last one. But if you got all five, the last one's going to go here. Now from this point, we need to do what we did on the other board and we're going to need to install heat sinks on these steppers because they do need cooling. And like last time, I am going to orient my heat sinks in this direction because I think it's going to be slightly better for cooling. And just like that, now let me go ahead. I'm gonna populate the rest of these down here, show you what it looks like, and then we will take a look at the pin out of this board and I'll walk you around, show you what all this has on it. Okay, here is the board, all the heat sinks installed. Now let's take a look at the schematics for this board, the pin outs for this board, take a look at what's on here and how we're going to hook everything up. Okay, so here we are with the pin out that I printed off of the Big Tree Tech GitHub repository. Let's kind of walk through this board real quick and just show you what's available. Now, obviously, these were all the stepper sticks that we installed to begin with. And there are some chip selects and things like here in case there are special modes that we're going to need. This doesn't apply to us because we're using UART. These are going to be where we plug in our motors. So X, Y, Z, A, Z, B. Uh, extruder zero, extruder one. Now we have four total fans on here, but only one of these fans is controllable from software, and that's gonna be this fan zero. And the way we can tell is you'll notice it has a 1224 volt here, and it has a 2.3. This 2.3 here is a pin number, whereas the ones that are not controllable, fan one, fan three, and fan two, have a ground and a 12 volt. This means it's not hooked up to a chip. It is just hardwired to power. This SWD here, that is for software debugging. We don't care about that one. Now we support two hot ends on this board. We have hot end zero and hot end one. We're only gonna be using the first one at this point. We have the bed, which is gonna be hooked up to our MOSFET. This is our power input. Uh, we have some additional pins here for USB, voltage input, more USB, and some other clock pins and selects in case we have some external devices. We have SPI, we have this Mani SD, we have I squared C, and we have a Wi-Fi in case we wanna add a Wi-Fi card to here. This TFT is going to go to our display for the touchscreen functionality. These are our thermistors for the bed, for hot end zero, and for hot end one. Again, we're only going to be using zero. We have NeoPixel support on here, just as we did on the other main board. This allows us to add colored lighting that is controllable. We have the servos. This is where we're going to plug in our BL Touch. Probe can also be used for BL Touch, but we're actually going to be using the Z Stop because it is also our N Stop. Now we have some voltage outputs that we're not going to be using. These power functions here are going to be in case we add some sort of power backup or power resume, that kind of thing. Then we have an E0 and an E1 detect that we can use to detect our filament runout. And these two expansion ports here are going to be for the text portion of our display. And we have some additional pin outputs here. Again, we're not going to be using those, but these are important if you are coding for this board or if you're adding external peripherals. So let me go ahead, let's get the board installed. We have a couple of options there, and then I'll show you how everything gets connected. Okay, so when it comes to installing the board into the case, we actually have a couple of different options. And the first one you may have seen on Tripod's Garage when he did this mod, and he chose this mounting plate. This one's available on Thingiverse. And as you can see, what it does is it takes the board, uses the existing mounting holes, and then bumps it right up to the side of the chassis so that you can then cut these holes out and do it basically the way you were doing the other board. Now, given the fact that I don't know if this is going to be my forever board, I came up with a slightly different solution to this one. And 
I made a new mounting plate, which I will also be putting up on Thingiverse. And with this one, this sets it back away from the edge of the chassis, sort of halfway between the MOSFET and the side of the chassis. And then I can use extension cables to mount these wherever I want. So I've got the USB port here and I have an SD extension cable that I can run somewhere also. Now I also have the option of using the SD card that comes on the display or have them both available just in case I want to switch it around. So I'm going to be using this extension as well as the USB extension to install it in my chassis. Now how exactly am I going to do this? Well this is kind of a personal preference thing however you think fits your use case best. I'm going to want my USB mounted right here in the front so that I can easily get to it, kind of sort of where the last one was. I like this side, kind of already got my workspace set up for this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut and drill the necessary holes in this side to mount this right here. I'm gonna make sure I mount it high enough up to where this does not get in the way of this. Now what this allows me to do, of course, is have a board wherever I want in the chassis and then have my USB port up here for the long term. And hopefully, if this USB type changes, then I can find another adapter similar to this to change it to and still keep my plug right here. And then for the SD mount, I'm also going to put it right over here, but I'm going to use these terrific slits that are for cooling and sort of use one of those to mount it right next to where my USB port is going to be. It's going to be kind of convenient right there facing upward, make it easy. Now, depending on whether you want micro SD or full size SD, they have adapters that come in different configurations. I'm keeping mine micro SD because that's what I'm used to using at this point, but it would be easy to swap one of these out later. So I'm going to go ahead and mark off for where I want to cut the holes for my USB and cut those out using a Dremel and drill for the screws. Again, all of these parts are going to be available in the description and you can see how I do this and how I get it mounted. Then we'll mount the board. Okay, we're ready to install the board. So first thing we've got, like I said, we got my custom mounting plate that I am going to install right here first. And we're just going to use the existing mounting holes that the other board attached to. I may improve this in the future. Uh, one thing I don't like about this is this end is a little bit flexible. It's not a big deal. Uh, there's not going to be a whole lot of uh, pressure anything on the board obviously but it'd be better if they had some feet or something on this end okay that's good and secured we're going to take our main board now for the wires to be the correct length and everything to hook up correctly you're going to need to make sure that the terminals are on this end and we're also going to need to go ahead and hook these wires up ahead of time so that everything fits together the way it's supposed to. I'm gonna go ahead and take out my SD card. I can go ahead and move that to the SD card slot on the front to make sure I don't lose it. Now, I'm going to go ahead and plug in that. Go ahead and plug in, make sure we got that the right way up. There we go, and it snaps in just like usual. Now, this, I want to do my best to make sure it is out of the way. As long as I don't crease it, everything should be fine. 
and we'll work on the rest of these a little bit later. There we go. It's a good way to do it. I don't want these holes to be obstructed. And now we can attach this board. I have already tapped these holes to make them easier to install. These are M3 screws. You can use eight millimeter or so, or six even if you have it, and they'll be fine. There we go. Now this is a little bit more rigid now that I have everything installed because the board itself is making the whole mount more rigid. Okay, now we can go ahead and start hooking up all the peripherals to the board. Go ahead, um, let's go ahead and start with these over here. So looking at, again, just like we did on the other board, I'm going to orient the sheet. I know you can't see it's pretty bright, but I'm going to orient the sheet to match the board so that I know what I'm looking at. So I do have this off to the side. So going around here, let's go ahead and plug in this one because it's already in the chassis. The bed is going to be this one right here. And positive is going to be on my left. Okay. Positive on the left. Again, tight enough to squish down the ferrules, but not so tight that you're deforming anything. There we go. Give them a little tug to make sure they're in there correctly. Next up, let's go and pull out the main power. Again, these are the bigger wires. And for this one, the red is on my right okay. again those are good and tight moving along go ahead and grab one of these fans over here so this one the one with the blue and yellow this is going to be our uh, part cooling fan. So this is the one that needs to be controlled by the main board. So this is going to be fan zero because that's our only computer controlled fan. And then we're going to grab the other fan while we're connecting. Now technically this fan, which is our hot end fan, could be hooked up to any of the other ones because all of these other ones are always on. I'm going to go ahead and just make it fan one for consistency. Okay, let's move on. Let's look for our hot end wires. Hot end wires are right here. Again, the polarity on these wires don't matter. So I'm gonna loosen up. We have hot end zero is on the bed side. So this one's hot end zero. are good and secure. All right, moving around. So now that these are on this side, we can kind of hook up however we want because we can go around this way, we can go around this way. I really like kind of the layout here of this board because this allows us to better control our wiring and it's a great design if we want to run wires around this way and this way to keep them out of the airflow. So going here, we've got, this is Y. So Y is going to be our second plug here. Now this is going to have to go all the way around this way to the Y end stop. Now I'm actually going to pull this one back a little bit further than it was originally. And this one probably is gonna to have to go over the board for now, but I think it'll be out of the way. Ground and signal it doesn't matter which way we face this, but obviously our key is on this side. So I think we're going to have to turn it around this way. And then we're going to put this on the left pins. So again, just like this, it should go on here. It's going to be a little tight. 
because this is actually a three pin, but it works pretty well. Let's go ahead and grab another one of our motors. This one right here is going to be one of our Z's, so this is Z1. We're going to put that in the next one. Let's see, what do we got here? We have X. So X is going to go in this position. And then our X stop is going to work just like our Y stop. We're going to need to turn this and put it on the leftmost pins with the orientation that I have. Again, I'm covering ground and signal. Kind of hard to get it in there, but these do fit rather well. Z2, right here. And we have, this is going to be our extruder, so that's going to be our first one. And that's all of our motors, these two in stop. Let's go ahead and do our BL touch. So BL touch has what we're going to use as our Z stop, and then of course it's got the servo. So Z stop is going to be ground and signal. Now for this one, we're going to have ground in the middle, signal on the left, which is actually the opposite of what this is right now. So these need to be swapped. Okay, so then we'll put the white on my left, black on my right. Get those pushed in really well. And then those will go here. Polarity on the BL touch does matter, unlike the other end stops. Okay, now let's double check our servo pins for our other plug. According to this, it's going to be ground, power, and 2.0. So ground, power, and this is the signal pin. So this is the correct orientation. We're going to plug this into the servo pin, which is right here. Push it all the way down. It should stay in just fine. No problem. Again, some of these going across the middle here shouldn't be any problem. Next up, we have our filament runout detection, which is this one. Filament runout detection is going to be this one for E0. And that is going to be 5 volt ground and signal. So 5 volt ground and signal. It's going to go just like this. It should work without any additional modification. And we have our final two pins, which are our bed and our hot and zero. Bed goes to the very end. Kind of a stretch. Hot and zero goes to the one that's next. There we go. Move these off to the side. Oh, one more. We also have our pins for our display. So this is our TFT, which is going to go to this one right in here. It's going to go in this orientation. So the loose wire is going to be our reset pin. So that's going to be on this end. And then you orient the other ones in the same direction. And then we have our text pins for our text display and again I already have these labeled this is one and this is two because I labeled them before and we have one and two now I'm going to spend a little bit of time tidying everything up before I close it up then we'll turn everything over hook everything back up and we'll be ready for a test to see if my firmware looks good one last thing is you're going to hook up this last fan you can actually use either this one or this one, they're wired exactly the same way, and then this fan will be hooked up whenever your power is on. Now, ideally, this fan would be a little bit further up the chassis to cool these directly. So a future mod I might want to do would be to actually putting a larger fan here that spins slower and just moves more air, because then I would be cooling the entire main board and not hoping that just adding some airflow was enough to keep things cool. I honestly don't think I'm going to have a problem here. These are good heat sinks, and this is going to create airflow, but I probably will come back later and add some additional cooling here. Okay, just as before, I have everything hooked back up here. All the wiring in the back, power supply, everything like that is hooked up the way it should be. But I wanted to give you a closer look at the finished work. So right here, you can see I've got my USB port, and I've got my SD card slot. These are very easy to access. I really like the look of it. And here is my display. 
and as you can see, looks great here even though it's not flush. And what's great about this one, of course, is now I have access to my USB slot and access to my SD card slot, which is here on the side. And I can use some sort of, you know, screwdriver or something else to push down right here and everything looks great. So now let's go and cut it on. I've got my firmware.bin on my SD card here and now I can cut it back on and flash and boot up. All right, Marlin comes right up. That is bugfix2.0.x branch. I'm using the same branch and the same code base that I used on the other board so that I had an apples to apples comparison when comparing performance. So now we can back out. I will test the motion of the printer and we will also test the heating up of the printer before I get going with any of my test prints. Okay, we're back wide here. We can see our BL touch is actually lit up. This is good, that's a good sign. So let's go ahead and test our motion. I'm going to just move some of these axes from the center. So we're gonna move X and it moves to the left, which is good. Moves to the right. And let's check out the Y. It's gonna to move to the front, move to the back. It's all good. And last but not least, let's move the Z. It's gonna go down. It's gonna come back up. There we go, just as you expect. So now that we're sure that everything is moving correctly, we can move on to doing an auto home to make sure that all of our end stops and BL touch are also working correctly. End stops look good. We're gonna to move to the center. BL touch deploys. There we go. Detects correctly. I'm going to do a second probe. We're all good. Next up, I'm going to do a quick heat test. Make sure that the bed and the nozzle heat up correctly. I can just go to temperature. I can go to my preheat PLA and just choose the first one. That should get both. Uh, the display is saying 205 and 60, which are my defaults. And we already see the nozzle heating up. And we're going to start seeing the bed heat up as well. Yes. So it looks like all of this is working correctly, which is terrific. Now I can move on to my test prints and then we'll have something to compare to see how this board compares to the other board and to our stock configuration, uh, just so that we know what we're getting in terms of an actual upgrade. So go off to those prints. I'll be back in a minute with the results. So that's it for this upgrade. Now, two things, number one, if you are looking for any of the components that I've used in this video, please check the description below. I'm gonna have links to everything that I use so that you can grab them for yourself. Number two, if you're looking for my firmware, I'm gonna have that in three different formats for you to grab. Number one, if you just want the binary, if your printer is basically configured the same way mine is, you can grab the pre-compiled binary, stick that on the micro SD card as firmware.bin, Stick that in the main board. When you power up, it should flash that firmware.bin directly to your printer and be ready to go. Now, if you need to do your own compiling or your own configuration, I'm gonna have two different forms for that. Number one, you can grab just the configuration files in a convenient zip that's gonna be shared below. Or you can download my entire source tree from GitHub and I'm gonna include that link also. In my next and final video of this series, I'm going to give you my full comparison of the two boards that I tested. I'm going to give you the pros, the cons, the differences, and I'm also going to show you the full benchmarks between the two boards so that you can make an informed decision on which board to go with. And I'm going to have benchmarks that actually show you which board processes G-code faster. So if you're looking forward to that, make sure that you like this video. Make sure that you're subscribed and hit the bell icon so that you're notified when that posted. And if you want to support this channel, I'm going to have the links down in the description below. Again, thanks for watching. I'm Chris, and this has been Curzy Fabrications. See you next time.